um, give a welcome to Masayuki. Thank you. So Masayuki um, Igawa, he is a senior software engineer for SUSE, and he works on Kubernetes. And that will be what his talk is about today. Thank you. So I will talk about Kubernetes the hard way. Uh, I'm actually working, I'm not working on the Kubernetes itself, but I'm working for uh, OpenStack things. But so, you know, as you know, Kubernetes is a very uh, popular and famous uh, technology recently. So uh, I'm very interested in this uh, technology. So I'm on the free node, GitHub, Twitter, and LinkedIn, etc. So you can uh, contact me, yeah, if you want. And uh, I also uploaded uh, this slide to the GitHub here. And I also, I, I will also upload to the uh, Force Asia site later. Okay, let's get started. And the uh, agenda yeah, is like this. So disclaimer like this. So who I am? So I, uh, I was in a traditional IT company in Japan uh, a long time, and uh, moved to HP, and now Suze. And uh, my job is a uh, uh, Suze OpenStack Cloud QE team, and the job is a senior software engineer and the upstream and the downstream developer. And uh, I mainly focused on the QA side, quality assurance side. And I also uh, some project in OpenStack core reviewer. It seems like uh, it's similar to uh, maintainer or committer or like that. And I also, I am also uh, one of the authors of this book, Red Book. Uh, it's an uh, open stack cloud integration. It's written in Japanese. And also uh, uh, infra CI guide as a reviewer. And um, my hobby is a bike, uh, clouds, building a cloud, open stack cloud, and a diet. This is uh, my weight graph. Yeah, so far, so good. <laughs> so today's goal is uh, understand the, what is the Kubernetes the hard way, and the other is uh, I'd like to you to motivate to try uh, OpenStack. Uh, no, sorry, Kubernetes the hard way uh, by yourself. So first, uh, when you make a Kubernetes cluster with uh, Mini Kube or Kube Adam Rancher or uh, GKE AKE EKS. Maybe you feel uh, looks like a magic because it's very easy to build a uh, Kubernetes cluster. And, uh, but you also feel what's going on inside, inside because it's like a magic, right? So if you want to know the, its components and the architecture, and uh, it's it, Sometimes happen the uh, error or warning or some uh, failure. You maybe need to debug it, and also you also need uh, want to build a Kubernetes cluster by yourself. And uh, I, as I already said, uh, you feel it's too easy. <laughs> so maybe you need you want to be. Uh, you want more harder way to build a Kubernetes, maybe. And uh, you, maybe you want to understand the Kubernetes itself deeply. So if you're interested in that, like that things, uh, there is a Kubernetes the hard way. Yeah, this is not mine. Yeah, different person. Yeah, he is very <laughs> uh, famous and popular person in uh, Kubernetes. Yeah, there is. Uh, Kubernetes the hard way in a Git, Git, uh, GitHub repo. Okay, so what is a uh, Kubernetes the hard way? 
it's a bootstrap Kubernetes the hard way, in a hard way, on basically Google Cloud platform, GCP. So it's a tutorial for Kubernetes uh, to build a Kubernetes uh, infrastructure. And there is no script, automated script. It's only uh, uh, command line and uh, some uh, setting up uh, files. And also, it, uh, it's uh, open source. And also, it's cons uh, the document consists of 14 chapters. And uh, with that, uh, Kubernetes the hard way, we can build uh, like these components and versions. Uh, the Kubernetes 1.12, but uh, the current latest version is 1.13. So it's not the latest, but yeah, uh, but that's good. And the uh, container D runtime and the divisor CNI container networking and the CD core DNS. Yeah, the version is like this, not so old. So it's good. And the, the outline is like this, the 14 chapter, as I said uh, earlier. The first three uh, prerequisites and the installed clients and the provision uh, compute and the network and the setting up, uh, mm, where is that? Uh, maybe uh, security groups like that and the setting up uh, TRS certificates. Yeah, like this, and the bootstrapping uh, some components, and uh, yeah, provisioning the pods network or like that, and the uh, uh, number thirteen, uh, there is a smoke test, we can test it, and the last thing is very important, uh, otherwise you need to pay a lot of money to Google Cloud forever, so. The, what is the uh, Kubernetes the hard way? So this is the first chapter uh, prerequisites. Uh, it says uh, almost uh, 0 point, uh, 22 cents per hour, and if that means a uh, five. Five thirty-nine, uh, five dollar thirty-nine cents per day. Yeah, it's not so expensive yeah, to run it. It's very easy, and uh, you need the G Cloud command. Yeah, so I already said that it works on a Google Cloud platform, but uh, as I. I also already, already said I'm an OpenStack guy, so I wanted to run it on the OpenStack cloud. <laughs> so I could run it. I, yeah, I was be able to, I can, I can do that. And uh, I will talk about later about it. And uh, the, on the Google cloud, the N1 standard one instance is required. Uh, six instances required. So that means uh, three controllers and uh, three workers, and also we need uh, one uh, load balancer. So load balancer is uh, connected to the controller nodes like this. Yeah, the architecture of the uh, Kubernetes hardware. Uh, yeah, after the after running the uh, document, yeah, we can get uh, like this Kubernetes cluster. So, actually, it's really easy to run the it's uh, run the document. It only takes it took uh, two 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 hours and a half, not that much, and the cost is less than one dollar. It's very easy. And uh, so it said the hard way, but it was not so hard because we 
just need to uh, follow the instruction. Yeah, that's it. And uh, there were also some warnings, but uh, I don't care about that. <laughs> yeah, actually, it's really easy, but I could not understand itself because it's, it's too easy <laughs> to run that. So I want it to implement on the more harder way. So that is the uh, OpenStack Cloud. So um, the first three, I, I have an uh, old OpenStack Cloud in my room. Uh, that is a three uh, one new servers. But this is, uh, yeah, old, but the, uh, the performance itself is good, but uh, it's very noisy, and uh, it consumes uh, a lot of electricity. It means uh, costly to run and maintain the cluster, OpenStack cluster. So I, I decided to make a new cl uh, OpenStack cluster. So that is uh, ASLOG, this mini is very small. Uh, that size is like, like this, very small. It's like uh, Intel NUC, uh, the size is uh, similar to Intel NUC. The CPU is very uh, low, and the memory is a bit uh, smaller, and the hard disk and the SSD is a, very, uh, it's a bit smaller than the old one. And the software is like this. I installed the uh, OpenSUSE 15, version 15. And uh, I also installed the OpenStack Rocky version. The components are like Novagran, Cinder, Keystone, Neutron. And uh, I follow the OpenStack install guide. Yeah, there's no, mm, there are some <laughs> issues actually, but uh, not so critical. Yeah, and the cost is uh, almost $300 per node. And uh, I need uh, four nodes, compute, two computes, and uh, one controller, and uh, plus one storage. So I build, that, I build the OpenStack Cloud first. So, but uh, there are some uh, problems and the challenges. The one problem is the initial and the maintain cost uh, required. Yeah, it's costly. So, yeah, as I said before, yeah, it's the three hundred dollars. It means the twelve thousand dollars total, totally. So it's not so uh, cheap. And also, OpenStack is also hard for me. <laughs> and the, the controller nodes was unstable with the SSD. Yeah, I think the, my SSD quality isn't good. So I have to change the uh, SSD to new one. But uh, the similar failure and the uh, similar failure occurred at the time. So I have to change it the disk to the hard disk. So the currently it's stable now, but uh, I'm not sure the uh, uh, main reason for the unstable. And also I took a lot of hours to rebuild because of the hard disk failure. So I uh, made an automated script with the unstable playbook. Yeah, it's also a very good exercise for me actually to learn the Ansible. And, uh, sorry. And uh, there are some differences between the GCP and the OpenStack. Uh, when I build a Kubernetes cluster uh, under the OpenStack. So, so these are differences between uh, GCP and the OpenStack. So basically, the command is, user command, CLI command is different. Uh, GCP uh, is for uh, gcloud command, and the OpenStack is OpenStack command. So 
for example, booting, booting an instances uh, in the GCP is like this. GCloud computer instances create uh, uh, instance name and the machine type setting, and uh, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, OpenStack server create, open in the OpenStack, OpenStack server create uh, flavor something and uh, instance name. So like this, the, like this happens uh, in the configure network and the security groups and uh, yeah, these uh, different command is needed. And also I need a host name resolution in my OpenStack cloud. Yeah, I should set up uh, something like uh, DNS or at the host. Yeah. yeah, but that's it. Not so difficult to resolve that. And I also need a load balancer in an OpenStack cloud because uh, there is no load balancer uh, originally. So I use the Nginx VM for load balancer uh, because Octavia is a bit harder for me to install than the setup. But uh, yeah, uh, imaginary, maybe you, you want to use the Octavia for load balancer. Yeah, that's it. That's the uh, difference between uh, JCP and uh, OpenStack for uh, the Kubernetes the hard way. Yes. And conclusion. So I could run, uh, run the uh, Kubernetes the hard way itself, but uh, it's really easy to run itself. So, but uh, I want to understand the Kubernetes more. So I set up the, my OpenStack cluster and uh, I try and, uh, error, try and uh, error something to understand itself. So one outcome is a bus script to run the itself, uh, to run the Kubernetes the hard way uh, on the whole of the thing. So the, this bus script itself is not so uh, useful. Maybe, uh, yeah, useful. It just run the bus script. Yeah, uh, after that, we can get the uh, Kubernetes cluster itself, but uh, yeah, it doesn't make sense. So it, it's, it is just for me to understand the Kubernetes. So I think to, to make like this bus script or uh, Ansible playbook to help you uh, understand uh, yeah, Kubernetes itself. And also the Kubernetes, the hard way is for just learning not for production, so you don't, you must not use it in a uh, production environment because there is no uh, HA thing, so the fast system volume, thing, et cetera. And it's also open source. We can read and write. Yeah, of course, the Kubernetes hardware itself is open source, and also the Kubernetes also are uh, open source. So you can, we can. Uh, participate the community and the developing. And uh, there are some books already, and uh, also our Kubernetes.io website is useful, should be useful to understand uh, Kubernetes. Yeah, that's it. It's a bit hard <laughs> earlier. Thank you very much. <laughs> Any questions? Any questions from the audience? Uh, so you said that um, Kubernetes the hard way wasn't actually that hard and you just followed the tutorial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One thing I noticed is that it looked like it was using pre-compiled binaries for ah, everything. Yes, right. Did you consider building static binaries for all the Kubernetes components from source? Because ah, that's pretty yeah. difficult because yeah, Go yeah, is that not should so be fun. difficult. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You are right. Yeah. That's 
yeah, that should be more <laughs> difficult way, harder way. So if you want, yeah, I will try that <laughs> if I have a time. Thank you. Um, I mean, coming back to his point was that uh, maybe the Kubernetes hard way uh, means that getting to know the underlying architecture and how it works uh, from each component. This? Uh, yeah, I mean, the whole hard way as in the hard way because usually people use KubeADM and we don't really know how it creates everything because we use the KubeADM uh, related uh, thing. So yeah, yeah. Uh, I I use this uh, on I use the Kelsey High Tower one uh, on an AWS cloud, but then I yeah. did it manually. Yeah. Uh, as you said, uh, it might take a couple of hours more, uh, but then at least what I really liked about it was that you get to know each component, uh, you know, what it how it behaves and what it exactly does. So yeah, I mean compared to KubeADM, I would say yeah, this was. Uh, much better. Yeah, I just w had to just give a feedback about it. Uh -huh. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I I probably don't hear the uh, whole of the things, but uh, you you your comments. Uh, we I should uh, do something more on this or uh, sorry. <laughs> Uh, yeah, thanks. He was giving some feedback, I think, on uh, Kubernetes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, thanks. The ecosystem. Any further questions from the audience? Last but one slide. Uh, you said it is uh, not for production means. Yeah. So it can be used on production server also, right? Yeah. This, yeah, this, uh, the Kubernetes hardware itself is not for production environment. I mean, we need to consider that a lot of things, yeah, for example, HA or persistent volume to run the production environment. So you can use this for production environment, but uh, you also have to consider the, a lot of things like these things. And uh, yeah, you can customize it. Okay, it is used. It is actually used for automatic deployment only, right? Uh, automated deployment. Yeah, you can do it with uh, like I did, but script or um, yeah, Ansible playbooks or like that. You, you can do it, I think. <laughs> okay. There's more time for questions. Kubernetes on uh, single board computers. Single board computers? Yeah. I actually don't know what. Uh, like, like Raspberry Pi. Ah. Uh, like uh, 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 I'm not sure. Sorry. <laughs> Maybe. Has anyone tried uh, Kubernetes on any small devices? No. Sorry. On individual small what? devices. What? Okay. Last. So um, last one. We've heard there's there's Raspberry Pi clusters using uh, Kubernetes. <laughs> Questions from the audience? No. Okay. Let's uh, thank Masayuki. Thank you very much.